everyone. Welcome to one of our first in-person episodes of Casey's Corner. <laughs> I'm with my friend Kate Colley. She and I met through our daughters where they totally just like pimped us out <laughs> for a play date. Yeah. Which very often happens, if, yeah. as you well know, with kids. But I was just blown away by, first of all, when you told me what you did, which yeah. we'll get into that in a second, I was like... There's a reason we met. Yeah. I needed this in my life. It's so exciting to me. So go ahead, tell everyone what is it that you do. So my name is Kate Colley. I am a hypnotherapist. I'm also trained in neurolinguistic programming, inner child work, face reading, among many other things. And essentially what I do is I've, I've become quite skillful at people reading and basically attuning to someone's subconscious, which is below what they're aware of, extraordinarily quickly. Um, and so I can do that by means of looking at them, by reading micro expressions, by watching what their eyes do. Like when we were talking the other day, yeah. I was like, I we were at a play <laughs> She game. totally was watching me and I was like, this is kind of cool, but kind of scary. Yeah, because it's, it's people's biggest fears is that they, they are afraid to be seen for their truth. And it's also their deepest need. And so it kind of hits up against that often when I tell people that I do people reading, but, um, I work with people with trauma, with anxiety, with uh, emotional health, mental health, addiction. I actually spent the first portion of my career doing uh, eating disorders, binge mm -hmm. eating, bulimia, a little bit of anorexia, but I've personally had all of the eating disorders. Wow. And so I know, I know that feeling and I know all three of them really, really well. And so I also know what it takes to get out of that. Now what's really cool is that you started this kind of work super young and younger yeah. than I think a lot of people would expect. Tell us about that a little bit. Yeah. So when I was 14, I had a close family member that was diagnosed with breast cancer and it was pretty severe and it made sense to me in that moment where I was like, well, if the body created this, the body also has the actual DNA codes in its biology to reverse it. And it just clicked for me. So I kind of knew that's what I wanted to do. And I started studying, um, healing. Okay. So it was, I started in like the land of Wu with energy yeah. healing, <laughs> the land of the land of you. Yeah, I, uh, yeah. But a lot it started. But you didn't say you were like fourteen. I was fourteen. Yeah, she was fourteen when she decided yeah. this is what I know I meant to do and want yeah. to do, which is amazing. Yeah. And kind of what other training have you had throughout? You know, up until this point to kind of keep expanding your toolbox a little bit. Yeah. So it started with the energy healing. I started seeing clients when I was sixteen. And then I went on after that to study body work. So I understand the body really well, as, which is super important for any type of emotional anything. You have to involve the body. Um, and then somatic psychology, which is the mind-body connection. After that was inner child work, hypnotherapy, neurolinguistic programming, face reading, body language. I've learned from the top military officials who are quite skillful in That's lie detection so cool. and interrogation. Is it terrifying to date you? Like, do people get really intimidated about <laughs> dating you? That's gotta be, right? I think, I don't know. Or do you not tell them that you can do this ahead of time? Or like, no, I do. when do you bring, you bring it in? So, I do, anyway. I, yeah. No, I do. I, so my, my partner now, he, he was so funny. We were at the farmer's market the other day and I overheard him telling a friend, like, she catches everything, man. Like, she catches <laughs> fucking everything. And you can't get anything. Because he'll, I'll catch a micro expression out of the corner of my eye and I'm like, that. What, what was that? You know? Ooh, that's tough. Not, and not every time. I try not to be like... I was going to say, do you sometimes just let it slide? So that he's, oh, yeah. <laughs> I, you have discernment. I'm sure. Discernment's very important. Yes, yep. yes. You know when to turn it on, when to kind of hold back a little bit, right? Learning. Yes, yes. learning. Exactly. Yeah. So I'm sure that the world of hypnotherapy, body language reading, face mm -hmm. reading, all that stuff probably comes with some skepticism, right? Probably. Yeah, probably. Do you yeah. just not even tune it in? Do you completely tune it out? Or how do you deal with skeptics? Um, I think if I deal with a skeptic, I actually can see it on their face. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> that you know it's coming, And right? so I point it out. You know, if, for example, in sales, if any of you guys are, are doing sales, there are very, very minor things that you can look out for when somebody has an objection. And some of those things I'll teach you now, because you can use this in sales, you can use this with partners, That's you awesome. can use this with your kids, you can even use this with yourself. You okay. You notice yourself doing this. One of them is preening. People that do, you know, this, it means that they've just experienced something uncomfortable. So they've just had a stress response in their body. 
a big one is people that do, I don't know if you can see my lips, but and like you kind of biting bite your lips. lips. Yeah. So okay. that's holding back words. Okay. Makes and then sense. there's also anything where you're kind of uh, touching your eyes. That's usually fear. Because if you imagine when someone's scared, they do this. And what, what is this? They cover their arteries because that could kill them. This is like survival stuff. Wow. And so this is kind of in, in terms of skeptics, this yeah. is how I talk about it. It's like there are certain things that you are a human being that you cannot escape. You right. want to survive. You will do what it takes to survive. And when you feel threatened, even if that's mildly emotionally threatened, you will respond the same way as if a tiger is chasing you. You'll, yeah. And so you watch for those signs on people. And so often, if someone's really wanting to do this work, but they're, they're unsure about it, I'll point it out. I, I, I won't point out the exact behavior because sure. it makes people <laughs> yeah. a little bit uncomfortable. Yeah. But I'll be like, oh, you know, it's, it seems like maybe you felt uncomfortable there. Or maybe you were unsure about what I just said. I'm curious to hear more about that. That's incredible. Yeah. Wow. So basically you, you almost don't even let the opportunity for skepticism come in because you're calling it out basically and kind of proving them wrong in the same moment. I guess so. <laughs> you yeah. are really, that's what it is. You're proving them wrong. Like, no, actually I just totally figured you out. Yeah. That's pretty great. Yeah. And I actually, I did. I, so I went to the farmer's market, the Malibu farmer's market, mm -hmm. which is super cute. <laughs> okay. The other day. And I did free face readings all day long. My oh, friend put right. on an event and it was so fun. And I, I did have one person very skeptical. Mm -hmm. His wife wanted him to come because she had this mind blowing experience. She's like, you gotta go, you gotta go. And so he comes and he was, you know, in this little 10 minute session, he was skeptical until minute nine. And all I was watching for was his deviation from normal and when he actually opened up. And as soon as I saw him open up, I repeated back his words to him mm -hmm. because the human neurology will never reject itself. This is a point of connection that we can talk about later if that's okay. interesting to you. Yeah. And he started crying. Wow. And because it because it was it was a healthy mirror for him of what he mm -hmm. was feeling and going through. It's so incredible how much of and we've talked about this kind of, you know, a little bit in the past we've had what, two play dates, but we've been talking and stuff. We kinda of hit it off very quickly. Um, that there's so much that we are holding on to that we don't mm -hmm. even realize it. And we don't know What's, what's going to take to break us down? Is it going to be weekly therapy sessions? Is it going to be losing this weight that's been in our heads that we have to lose or something like that, right? So yeah. what is it, at least in your experience, that kind of triggers, triggers those breakthrough moments for people where they, it clicks and they get it and they do kind of push through? Yeah, that's a great question. The, the breakthrough moments in my experience come when you get out of your logic head which is your conscious mind. Your mm -hmm. conscious mind is the thoughts you're aware of, the things you're aware of, and it's also about 5% of what's actually going on. We spend a lot of our time being aware of just that and thinking that that's all that there is, but the breakthrough moments really happen when you pass what's called the critical faculty. Okay. You basically get over yourself. <laughs> and yeah, you, you, <laughs> that's all, I think a lot of us need yeah. that, we just get over it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but it takes a healthy mirror, right? right? And so you can't know what you don't know, but when you have a healthy mirror saying, oh, you know what, I just noticed something coming mm -hmm. through from your subconscious, which is basically what's running the show. That's the, the rest of the 95% with some amygdala stuff from your unconscious okay. mind that's where the breakthrough comes from because now you have access and free will and agency to access more of you. And, and if, I don't know if that makes sense. I can give you examples. Okay, yeah, yeah, tell us. About, but an example that I actually thought of right before we started that mm -hmm. I really want to share is one of my body image struggles that I had that I don't have at all anymore was that I have really, really small boobs. Okay. Like really, like you can't, you can't see, but they're very, <laughs> we, very small. We've all got our body insecurities. Yeah. That was yours, totally. And I would, I would just fantasize about like, oh my gosh, I wish I could get a boob job and I wish right. I could get bigger. And I, you know, we, we all do this where yeah. we stand in front of the mirror naked or with a bathing suit and you're like pinching and squeezing and trying to make things and you're fantasizing about, well, maybe it could look like this. Mm -hmm. So that information of, I want to have bigger boobs existed in my conscious mind. Okay. When I really, really broke it down over time by asking this question, well, what's important to me about having bigger boobs? Okay, well then I'd fit into bikinis, whatever. 
what's important to me about that? Well, because then um, other people would perceive me as so and so, right? And this is all, this is like super honest. Yeah. So and, just. And this is also very, I think this is the narrative that's this in what we do. so many people's heads. So many women. We all, we all have. Yep. And you know, yours, you wanted a body part to be bigger. I want body parts to be smaller. So like we something. all have something. Yeah. Yeah. But it's it, the the thing is 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 that's the symptom. The mm -hmm. desire to have your body be different is the symptom. But right. when I got down to the root, it was like, well, what's important about that to me? And you basically keep drawing it out because you're. It's almost like you're digging a hole into mm -hmm. your subconscious. What I found out is like, well, well, shit. Like, I actually just want to feel good enough. Yeah, that's it. But once you have that and you've unearthed that from your subconscious, I actually just want to feel good enough. I can go at that need directly instead mm -hmm. of through changing my boobs. Because right. if I were to change my boobs or lose the weight or gain the weight or da da da, that uncon or that subconscious so need there, right? is still there. Right. It's still running the show. You can't get anywhere from the conscious mind. You have to go to the root and then move forward. So how do you get to that point? How do you get to the subconscious mind? Well, you can do it. So I do hypnotherapy. Mm -hmm. Definitely do it there. But even just the process I just gave you, yeah. you get, you have to get brutally honest with yourself, which is getting out of your own way. Like what is important to you about X, Y, Z and what's important about that. Eventually you're going to hit something rock solid right? and you'll feel it because there's a, there's a sensation of truth that you can feel in your body when you're like, Oh, that's it. It's almost, I mean, I'm assuming it's like you feel that release, you feel that decompression of like the pressure that you've had yeah. feeling, you know, inadequate for something. And I think that yeah. there is such a feeling and a sense of inadequacy along or around so many moms, wives, partners, yeah. women in general, no matter, I think we're all in this weird pattern of feeling like we're inadequate. I think a lot of it, unfortunately, has to do with the access to so many other people out there via social media. Yeah. Remember, what you're seeing on social media is not real. <laughs> it is the highlight reel. That's what I always tell people. Like, it's the highlight reel, not the behind the scenes. People aren't seeing me scream at Kennedy to clean up her room or to get down, you know, and do breakfast or seeing the real nitty gritty of things. It's it's the photos that people want to share. So remember that that's not real life. Right. How do you see people kind of, um, I mean, since you've been in this for so long, almost spiraling a little bit now with this whole comparison issue? Um, I see people spiraling in that way, very similar to what you said, right? Of they think that there's an ideal that they need to be and it's not being generated from their authenticity. Mm -hmm. They're seeing something in other that maybe touches on something that they truly desire, but the way that they go about it uh, is not sustainable. And so there's a crash and burn at some point. And things that aren't sustainable, crash diets. Don't work. Excessive workouts Don't that work. you never <laughs> stick with. So what are some of the tools? I mean, really, what do you have to get to uh, be kind of your normal or be your lifestyle to kind of accept all of that? Um, to get to your normal, you, you, again, it goes down to being really honest with yourself, you know, and you can actually use, I, in my work, I see every emotion as extremely valid, right? And I don't mean that the thought in your head about the emotion is valid because you can have this emotion of, to use the social media, for example, mm -hmm. let's break apart the backside of that. It's like you see someone living this life and you feel jealous, right? The jealousy is a real valid experience because it can be felt in your body. Right. The voice in your head from your conscious mind of like, oh, you suck and you're not good enough and you should be better. That part's not real. And, mm -hmm. and I want to actually like give you a visual so that yeah. you can remember that it's not real. This is the way your mind works. Your conscious mind has a filing cabinet of meaning. The I'm not good enough, the this, the that, whatever, that it's been harboring and collecting. It's programmed into you, so to speak, which also means it can be deprogrammed okay. from the time you are in utero. Wow. Okay. And our conscious minds are meaning making machines. So if we see someone on social media and we think that they're better than us uh, and it feels familiar to some extent, 
your conscious mind goes, great, <laughs> I'm going to make meaning of this. Let me pull out the filing cabinet of my past of the meaning and let me sort through and find the meaning that best fits that situation. Mm-hmm. It pulls it out and attaches the meaning. And the thing that we miss as humans in this society is that meaning isn't true. Right. It's not true. It's literally a program that you're running. It has no bearings of truth whatsoever. And since it's a program, it can be, again, deprogrammed into something better. But you can use that experience of like, wow, I feel so jealous because this person on social media has and does or looks like da 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 X, Y, Z. Jealousy is pretty much always, there's something that you desire in it, but there's a belief blocking you from getting there. And it might not be as surface level and cliche as like the body. It might be like, wow, like, you know, that person's confident. Like Mm -hmm. I desire confidence. It's because you're meant to have confidence and you're meant to be evolving into that confidence by means of breaking down the limiting beliefs and the shit that no longer serves you. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yes. Oh, yes. No. <laughs> it absolutely does. And I think that, you know, as you're talking about it, I'm obviously processing all my own crap in there too, but what is, so, you know, you have your meaning down here or, like, yeah. or what it actually is that mm-hmm. you're the true desire, the root, right. What kind of work can we all do to kind of get to that and eliminate the filing cabinet or reprogram the filing cabinet? Yeah. So the, it's great. So once you access the root, you can actually start using your conscious mind, your meaning making machine in much more effective ways. So once you get the root, you can start asking your mind, well, what would it look like to have that root be healed? What would it feel like? What would I walk like? What would I talk like? What would my posture be like? You basically engage your five senses Mm -hmm. because this is the way that your mind is built, it's built with the building blocks of your five senses. And so in order to reprogram it, you have to reprogram in different senses. Wow. So if you're like, hey, I, I desire to be confident and, and thank you, social media person, for right. allowing me to see that in myself <laughs> yeah. because now I know the root, then you can visualize. I mean, you can do it right now as you're listening to my words. You don't even have to close your eyes. Mm-hmm. How would life be different if I walked around and confident? Like, you know, what would I, I don't know if you can still see me, but what would I sit like? Right. If I were confident, you might take up more space. You might hold your palms open. You might walk slower. You might wake up earlier because you want to meditate. You might, but da, 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 da. So now in your work of body language reading and face reading and everything, when you see those kinds of things, people taking up more space, talking with their hands open, are those automatic signs that you can tell that they're a confident person? Yeah, there are like little kind of cues that you yeah. that you use. Yes. Okay. And sometimes people have learned the external cues of how to be confident or how mm-hmm. to be X Y Z, but they haven't backed it with doing the inner work, which is the cleaning up the shit. And women, in particular, because it's it's proven, women are more intuitive. We are more emotionally sure. perceptive than men. They pick up on that incongruency quickly. Mm. And that's where if you've ever met a guy, <laughs> maybe once or twice this has happened, and you're like, he's creepy. <laughs> the creepers out there. Yes. It's, it, but you can't pin it, you mm-hmm. know, where he's not so creepy, where you're like, okay, no. But you're like, mm, what you're sensing is an incongruency. He's acting a certain way, but his neurology is wired a different way. Mm. And the gap makes you feel so very unsettled. Yeah. Interesting. I don't remember your question. That's okay. You answered it. Okay, great. Like if those, (laughs) if those things about like if the body cues of a confident person helps you, (laughs) we're we're there. We're fine. Yeah. Um, Well, I think. Hold on. We have a few questions that kind of came in. And sorry, I know you guys are far away, but I wanted to make sure we got all of us in here. Uh, We just got some hellos and lots of people actually watching. Hi, everyone. Okay, we're gonna do. Ooh, lots of that's cool. Um, I think. I think I'm going to be vulnerable and open myself up to doing something cool. We can actually show awesome. Kate's work in action. So what should we do? Like a facial reading? Like what would it be if I came to you for a facial reading at the farmer's market? Would that make sense to do or do you know sure. too much? Uh, no, we could totally okay. do a face right. reading. Here, I'm going to move go. them over so they can see my face. Come and closer. See, like, <laughs> Come closer, guys. All right, let's okay. see. 
And so, and for the people that are watching, because if you want to use this as a skill, if you want to start practicing, one, I can give you more resources. Yes. And two, watch her face. Don't watch me. You're going to want to watch me because I'm talking, but you're going to want to watch for what happens with your face, and that's going to really put you on a... Okay. So, okay, so to, so to point out the first thing, I don't know if you guys saw it. <laughs> I know. I got it. Did you? Yeah, I think so. Have we talked about this one? No, but did I look at the camera? Raise my eyebrows? Yes. I always raise my eyebrows. Okay. okay. So yeah. that's called a mammalian eye flash. Okay. All mammals on the planet do this, and it's basically okay. a way of when mammals get together, they need to figure out as quickly as possible, can I eat it? Yes. <laughs> can I eat it? Do I Don't need eat me because of my eyebrows. Do I, I might. <laughs> You're very yummy. <laughs> do I need to run from it, fight it, or can I mate with it? Or is it a friend? Like, we're kind of this sort, sorting out, like, how can I place this, and then kind of act on it appropriately. So the mammalian eye flash actually just shows friendship. I'm a safe, okay. I'm a safe person. And so you'll notice, I, oh, this is good. I want to teach you guys something. Okay. <laughs> you'll notice in psychopaths. Yeah, for real. <laughs> how, to, how to catch a psychopath. How to spot yeah. a psychopath. How to spot a psychopath 101. They don't do the mammalian eye flash. Oh. Now, obvi now this also, that's very generalized. Um, people with autism also sure. often don't. And people with a lot of trauma who have more psychopathic tendencies also don't. And it mm. could be... So there's there's variations of that. But you'll start noticing it now when you meet someone. Like, yeah. see, I can... You know, you yeah, do yeah, it. Yeah. And, and you, you, uh, you subconsciously do it back. I think that there's... I've noticed especially... Well, luckily not today anymore. But with masks, yeah. I almost over-exaggerate my eyebrows when I'm like... Because I can't smile to people. I know. I always would... Passing someone, I would just smile. And again, yeah, it's like, no, yeah. I'm not threatening. I mean, I don't think I'm burning. You're not burning. Right but now I like intentionally will lift my eyebrows to kind of, yeah. Put yep. them that's so funny. Okay, so that's a full on body language kind of thing. Full on, full on yeah. Okay. And it's, it's interesting that you tuned into that because mm -hmm. one of the main features about your face is you have these really big, beautiful, open eyes. Mm -hmm. And the eyes are connected to the heart. So the more open someone's eyes are, they tend to be in the negative, more gullible. Mm. And they tend to believe things quite quickly, but in the positive, they they have an easy time connecting with others. Like you could just go in there and connect. You're not as skeptical. You kind of can just go with it. You might uh, fall in love easily. You can mm. also fall out of love easy. There's more fluidity with how you express your heart. Interesting. Yeah. All right. So all you other big-eyed people out there, we're good. We're, yeah. We're good. We're, <laughs> we're good lovers, apparently. Friends. Um, yeah, well, so if you talk about lovers, mm -hmm. we'll, we'll go there. Okay. Okay. So, um, in terms of, there's a lot to say there, but some, it's interesting that you're doing yes. this already. <laughs> she, she knows she's, what's coming. She's coughing. She knows what she's doing. totally reading me now. Okay. And that even could be because I said about lovers and you kind of, you went behind your eyes. Mm -hmm. I mean, you went into your head and you started doing this with your lips. So you really took in that information and you probably started thinking about mm -hmm. something about you. What about that? Sure. Um, so, but with your lips, so you have quite full lips. And, and they're not the most full that I've ever seen, but they are definitely full. And that denotes typically a sensuality. So even like we were talking about the mm -hmm. softness of these chairs, yeah. that's important to you. Like your, your place is very aesthetically pleasing. Mm -hmm. And the colors are very coordinated. It's of the five senses because it's visual. Things that are soft, things that feel good, things that look good. Mm -hmm. Whereas people with thinner lips tend to be more sexual because they often find that sexuality is the only place where they can really express themselves. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So would you say that like people with fuller lips tend to be like more outwardly creative or... Is that, or just more like visual and more tactile? Kind of? uh, more of the five senses. Okay. Yeah, the creativity. So you have that too. There's the, um, the filtrum is what it's called, right here between your nose and your lips. Mm -hmm. You have an indent here. Mm -hmm. And so your indent denotes creativity. And it's actually going to get more creative over time because it has a, a opening V shape to it. So she liked that. I don't know if you can <laughs> see that. But that was a yes, yeah. And then she, I flashed you. <laughs> But like, that was a yes for you. And this is how we can really tune into people and connect deeper is because when I watch that, I, I don't point out everything normally in sure. conversation, but if I see you open up around creativity, I could be like, oh my gosh, 
Mm-hmm. Tell me more about your creative side. Because right. like, that's super cool. And like you're lighting up because I'm reflecting it back to you in a healthy way. Um, making sense so far? Yeah. Okay, cool. And so let's see. And okay, are those your normal eyebrows or do you pluck them? I pluck the bottoms. Okay, but do you have them in the middle here? So, yes. Yeah, okay. Time, uh, yeah. I'm going all here. All the time. Going all the places now. Um, so you have you have these really thick eyebrows, which mm-hmm. is super amazing because that denotes strong liver energy. Which so mm-hmm. face reading comes from the uh, Chinese medicine. Okay. If you're familiar with like the meridian systems at all, a lot of it comes from that. And it's also combined with a lot of like Paul Ekman's work in uh, micro expression and mm. face reading. So maybe we could get into that. You just don't have very many wrinkles on your face, so it's hard to comment on that. So I'm commenting on the more of the Chinese stuff. Okay. But the the strong liver energy actually means that you have a a certain access. I'll say this, and it's actually a really good thing. You have a certain access to your anger. You're not going to be one that's going to necessarily slip into depression as your as your pitfall, okay. like some other people. Uh, anger is actually the emotion that kind of draws you out of depression and out of powerlessness. And anxiety, actually, as well. But um, So you, you have an access to, no, this is what I want. Mm-hmm. This is what I'm going to go after. So you have that kind of drive. And turn to the side. And you've got, so you've got a little bit of a chin, so you, you can be a little bit stubborn. You can mm-hmm. be... I can. Yeah. It's balanced by your brow bone. You don't have much of a brow bone. Okay. Uh, so you can kind of be fluid in that, but I think that's what I'm seeing in your eyebrows is like when you need to be that way, you can. And mm-hmm. you're aware of it inside of you of like what it is that you like and what it is that you want and things like that. You have a really interesting line here and it almost looks like a scar, but is it? Mm-mm. No, it's not. Um, so it's in the area of your adrenals in your kidneys. It actually just went away now that I brought awareness to it, which is super interesting. <laughs> uh, but that could be a part of you that's overworked in terms... Oh, so this might make sense. Overworked in terms of your... It's either your professional life or it's your how you, how people perceive you. There's a lot of adrenal energy going towards that. Hmm. hmm. Sounds... Yeah. Sounds uh, on point. Yeah. So that's, I'll pause there. Okay. I mean, there's more and we can talk about all the other things. Okay. But this could go, it could go on and on because I could look at your ears and I could feel your ears. and then da, 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 da. So cool. Yeah. That's amazing. How has the work that, here, I'm going to shift this a little bit so that they can see both of us again. What are some of the ways that the work you've done has just kind of changed people physically, emotionally? Do you have any like cool stories that you can kind of share with us as far as how the work has really improved people? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I definitely, a lot of my most rewarding work has been with really severe traumas mm-hmm. because there's, uh, we, we live in a world of duality where there's day and night and good and bad and light and dark. Mm-hmm. And inherently, when there's a darkness and you bring the light, which is pure awareness, into those dark places like trauma, the expansion that takes place is really dramatic, especially with the severe traumas. Right. So there's, I, I won't name anything specific, sure. but um, a lot of that kind of work. And then I know we were talking about, there was there was someone at the rehab center that I work at recently, and he came in, he had had this shoulder pain for, I think he said it was like a year, or maybe some amount of months, and he couldn't figure it out. He's gone to massages and chiropractor and da 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 and in about two minutes, and I just met this guy, I outlined where it was coming from emotionally and then structurally what he needed to do and emotionally where he was going. And he messaged me the next day like, holy shit, it's gone. He's like, two minutes. I've been working on this thing for like however long. Right. In two minutes, you solved it. You know? And it just goes to show how... When you know what to look for, it's so right in front of you and it's almost so obvious that you would, you would miss it because it seems too obvious. And I think that that's, there's such um, validity to that where people are, we're all, oh, I'm a little crooked, but let's see. I think that there are so many people dealing with anxieties right now, with mm-hmm. some sort of depression, with 
their own healing. And right now it's, okay, go to a doctor, they'll sign a prescription for you to take something. Go and hop onto this program or that program or go to a, this therapist. But there's only so much that I think as humans we're willing to share, right? Mm -hmm. And such like surface level things that really the work you do digs a lot deeper. Mm -hmm. How do you see kind of um, an improvement in people being more open to that kind of work now? Like, do you see that people are just kind of fed up with the way things kind of were and the access of, uh, I guess you would say, medic not really medication, but just right. healing more surface level and like being more open to a deeper thing now? Do you see like a major improvement in the past? couple of years yeah it's all in this right. shit storm <laughs> I think so yeah I think the shit storm has definitely brought people to kind of look at new things yeah it's hard for me to comment on because I've been in this world since I was 14 sure and so it's where I live and reside always yeah. you know so it's in my world it's that's kind of what is but it, it does feel like it's coming around to that. And, and probably in it, ultimately in the future, there'll be a nice blend where there's more discernment between this requires mm -hmm. medication or, you know, let's, let's try this with medication right. or let's try this without medication, but keep a close eye on it. Right. Because I do think, uh, and I, you know, I'm not a doctor, but um, a lot of people come to me after they've tried medication and it didn't work or they've tried talk therapy for years and it didn't work. That's the other word, like talk therapy versus hypnotherapy. Is that it? Like that's the terminology as far as like what's different? That's what I call it. Yeah. yeah it makes sense. Yeah. Talk therapy, I mean, unless you're trained in some type of somatic modality, like mm -hmm. my friend who's a therapist does brain spotting. So it involves movement of the body. Okay. But if you're simply talking about it, you're only changing what's going on in the conscious mind, right. which we talked about, is, right. is the tip of the iceberg. Yeah. You're not changing the roots. And so you're going to get fed up going in that circle. So what does hypnotherapy look like? Because honestly, I'll be, you know, in my head, it's like right. follow the pendulum or whatever, swinging the spiral and um, like make me cluck like a chicken while I'm, you know, not conscious. So right. Tell everyone, what does that actually look like? What does a session with you doing hypnotherapy actually look like? Yeah, so it's definitely not that. Um, I'm very lazy. <laughs> and <laughs> I just don't want to swing the pendulum back. I don't even count people down. Like, really? hey, no, no. Okay. <laughs> but then how does it happen? Well, so I go off of the philosophy that m most people mm -hmm. live most of their lives in trance. So if you've ever driven a car and mm -hmm. you're like, yeah. kind of get lost in your head, you're in trance. Mm -hmm. your your human body wants to be on automatic as much as possible it doesn't want to necessarily be in control that's why we find ourselves in habits in bad habits in bad patterns because the biology basically goes no it's good enough it's keeping you alive we'll just keep it there it doesn't want to actually change and so based off of that notion I watch for people with the face reading skills that I have mm -hmm. For them to naturally go into trance and then i'll just interrupt them and say close your eyes okay <laughs> and that's pretty much what it is and typically it's when they're talking about something negative okay. because our human neurology will actually prioritize negative emotions seven times more than positive ones so remember that next time you're say that again that viral wow. your human neurology as means of survival will prioritize negative emotions seven times more than positive ones. It will cling to it, it will hone in on it, it will try to figure it out. And that's why we often dwell on yes. something, right? That's the whole... Yes. Okay. And that's okay. even uh, the emotional refractory period. So 20, if you've ever been in an argument, this is from my one of my mentors, David Snyder, if you've ever been in an argument with somebody, mm -hmm. <laughs> many times, <laughs> yep. and you kind of come to resolution and it seems fine, but then they chew the wrong way and you're like, oh my gosh. <laughs> Yes. It's the emotional refractory period. You have 20 minutes where your neurology will prioritize seeking for and looking for that negative emotion just to make sure that the threat is gone. Wow. That's crazy. Yeah. Um, so cool. So going back to what a hypnotherapy session mm -hmm. looks like, I watch for the negative emotion. I watch for what's triggering you the most or what lights you up the most. We could go at it right from the positive or the negative. 
And then I ask you to close your eyes and I'll walk you through a somatic experience, mm -hmm. which is essentially uh, if you've ever gone up on stage or done something that you felt nervous about and you get butterflies mm -hmm. in your stomach, that's a somatic feeling. Oh, okay. You could explore that. Or like anxiety, I feel like I'm going to throw up. Yeah. That's a somatic feeling. So I wait for that and then we basically make it bigger because most of our lives we spend trying to get rid of the negative emotions mm -hmm. instead of trying to understand the roots so that we can use it to our empowerment to continue up leveling so cool i like that continue up leveling so if someone does want to level up on yes. their own um how can people work with you one-on-one -on -one? so i do have a couple spots right now available for a more longer term container with me one-on-one -on -one. You can, I would say if you're obviously you're on Instagram, just message me on Instagram, it's Kate Colley, send me a DM. Um, I respond to all of my DMs and I can send you more information that way. I do have a men's program that is coming this up. This is cool, tell them about Yeah, that. so I have a men's program that's coming up. I'm very, very excited about it. And it's essentially a, there's an energy happening on the planet right now where men are being asked to step up into their masculinity. And it's showing up in the form of men kind of being friend-zoned, men not knowing how to approach women, or men being in relationship with very naggy women. Hmm. And there's two sides to this, and I'm not like sure. pro-men and against women, yeah. or you know, pro-women against men. I love, I love all the genders. But the, the men's side of it is so powerful because there's... I know that they long for more. I know that they want to break free. I know that they want to be in their bigness. And I literally mean, I know we can't go too much into profanity, yeah, but like yeah. literally in their bigness, uh -huh. like their hard bigness. Yeah. And they want to be admired in that, but not just sexually or physically, but also in their careers and how they're seen. And it's really like we talked about that congruency is it's not me teaching them how to sit like, a badass CEO right. and walk because I could do that and I'm not a man. I could walk around like that sure. and be perceived that way and you could too. Yeah. But it's about going back into the past of what in, what program are they running in their past that's keeping them small, mm -hmm. that's keeping them in these dynamics where they they're, they know that they're ready to be like a leader, that they're ready to break through. Mm -hmm. And it's so beautiful to watch a man come into that and to alchemize because it never looks the same between one man or the other. So that's okay. my, that's my uh, program for men that will be live. You can DM me about that or send your husbands over. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure a husband would be so rare, raring to go. Yeah, like right. Mine, would. <laughs> mine was already, Jay was worried about her like coming over thinking that she was going to read him. I'm like, you're not even going to be here, dude. Oh my gosh. No, that's no, super funny. Okay. Uh, I also have, if you go to my Instagram profile, and I'm pretty sure there's the link, and then the link in the bio has courses and programs. I actually have about nine on there that are pre-recorded. Oh, They're cool. a really great price range. I have some for uh, magnetic confidence that's just for women. Nice. That's super, super fun. And I, and I teach, again, both sides, the congruency. It's the inner work, and then it's also the, the outer, like how do you actually become that radiantly mm -hmm magnetic woman and have one dream body by love which walks you through my process of how to actually tap into your authentic dream body mm -hmm. and to wipe clean the one that society tells you that you think you should that's have that's interesting yeah that might have to be a second episode yeah i think so that'd be fun very cool well thanks for coming over and hanging yeah. out yeah. i appreciate it all right everyone i hope you enjoyed today's show this was so cool to have someone in real life a real person here that i could touch and talk to um if you have any questions like katie said go ahead and dm her over at kate collie she'll be linked below when this gets posted and i will see everyone real soon be sure to tune in this thursday we have another episode with uh, DJ Joe Zahn, who blew up this past week after making that awesome uh, mashup for the Super Bowl. He's Mr. Wired Up, but you'll see him on here on Casey's Corner on Thursday.